for me, just for my own interests and tastes, are the highlights. I'd pick out, first of all, human interventions in evolution. Because you know, that's where you can see the power of, I don't know, what nowadays we would call anthropogenic agencies, human agency, which can actually influence the planet. It's a very big thing. You know, most other species on this planet just go along with the way nature is. We are the only species really dedicated or many of us, most of us are, really dedicated to changing the environment. And if you pick out the really big changes of this sort, I think there are maybe three of them. First is the um, invention, if I can put it like that, of agriculture, which modifies evolution by introducing what I call unnatural selection. So we're, we're, we're speciating, we're hybridizing, we're creating new species for our own purposes. Whereas, you know, the normal way in which evolution works is that, you know, random mutations happen and whichever tend to be successful in particular environments in which they find themselves um, reproduce. Um, the second big intervention is what I call the ecological revolution of the early modern period really gets going in the 16th century. And this is when voyages of exploration and discovery carry new life forms, new biota to continents that have never seen them before. And the result is that we now have a global environment in which we have climate for climate the same foodstuffs, the same animals, the same microbes, <laughs> and you know, to some extent you could also say the same people all over the world. That's an amazing innovation because for 150 million years before about 1500, evolution was happening divergently across the world. From about 150 million years ago, or thereabouts, say, when Pangaea, the land mass of the world, began to split into different continents, and continental drift started, and all these land masses gradually grew further and further apart from each other, separated by vast oceans. Evolution happened divergently, and you've got all these different species developing naturally in the Americas, and Australia, and Eurasia, and Africa. And when you've got a process in the planet that's lasted for 150 million years, and is suddenly, you know, snapped, turned around and you start getting this global environment being created very largely by human agency, I'd say that's an you know, amazing ripple. That really is a, a big ripple. That really is a great example of a worldwide transmutative phenomenon. And then the third one, obviously, in this category of human interventions and evolution is genetic modification, which enables us not only to create new species by unnatural selection, but also to target them. Those changes in very precise ways to suit what we think are our interests. And of course, we don't know where that's going to go. I, I'm a pessimist about everything. I think it's the only way to avoid disappointment. Uh, and I strongly suspect it'll lead us into disaster if we don't control it very effectively. But it represents possibly of all these three human interventions and evolution are most powerful yet.